Geek Myths, a novel about life, love, and the pursuit of sonic screwdrivers. Available in paperback and Kindle edition from Amazon. Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about Rosa, story 3 from the 2018 series of Doctor Who. Now on Sunday night, my wife says, right, that's it, we all go to bed, and then she says, I'll just line up Doctor Who, and then I walk in the room and sit down, she presses play. And a few minutes in, I go, have they gone back to cold openings? So what do you mean? I said, well, it hasn't, I haven't heard any opening music yet. And then she says, oh no, I fast forwarded through the titles, which put me on edge. In all fairness, it just put me on edge. I quite like the new theme tune. I know she's not a massive fan, but you know what, you can't have everything. So, here we are, in what I can only describe as a tightrope situation. Let me explain. This podcast is probably going to be one of a few you're going to listen to this week, all reviewing the new Doctor Who show, which is very nice. But let's face it, the majority of podcasters are male, white, and quite a lot of us are in the UK. So we're going to be discussing racism, as if we know what we're talking about. So we'll be dancing around all of the subjects, going, mm, ah, ooh, trying to be all nice and middle class and perceptive and aware and all of those things. And you know what? That's good. But let's face it. This is Doctor Who, a British TV program, commenting on a program, commenting on something that happened in the 50s in America. It might as well be an alien world. Now, let's face it, this was a storming episode. I can't see anybody at all saying it wasn't. And if they do say that, they're what's known in the trade as wrong. But of course there's lots of things to talk about, and let's face it, once we get to its core, we're going to be looking at this as a Doctor Who story. You've got some pretty odd things happening in the real world. So it's nice to be able to think that 60 odd years ago something important happened. Now, I'm sorry, bear with me. In the Doctor Who world, you've got a time machine, but the time machine is very rarely used as an actual plot device, especially in what used to be known as the classic era, the original run, shall we say. And early on in Doctor Who, because of the BBC's remit to educate and inform, as well as entertain, you got some historical stories. Stories where the Doctor and the crew visited certain places and experienced the world without any alien intervention, without any alien creatures. Um, Cite, for example, the Aztecs or the Romans or even the gunfighters. Yeah. I know there are various dubious things. Now, some of these were historically a bit, well, wishy-washy, and other things were a bit closer, like the French Revolution. But then, somebody had the bright idea to have stories set in the past that had aliens or monsters or creatures or something weird happening. Something a bit more what we now would see as Doctor who These became known as the pseudo-historicals, where the Doctor would turn up and mess something about with history. This was where fixed moments in time kind of came from, if you see what I mean. However, when it comes to fixed moments in time, a phrase that is not mentioned here in this story whatsoever, these are usually pivotal moments that uh, impinge on the rest of history. Now, if this was a tenant story, this would have been a fixed moment in time. But it's not. Somebody's messing about with time. 
And that's the Doctor Who, the sci-fi angle of it all. Because, let's face it, this story will always be a Doctor Who story. Here's a point. It's been written by two people, two very, very good authors. Can you see the join? Because I just can't. So, you've got your pseudo-historical with your alien intervention. You've got your actual historical. But here, here you've got what I can only describe as the hybrid historical. Because, yeah, it's the pseudo-historical in the sense that it's not history as it apparently... Now, let's use the punctuation marks here, the rabbit ears, actually happened. Some of the facts have been blurred a little, but most of them are pretty damn close, and they're closer than Doctor Who's ever got before with history. Now, Russell T. Davis used to say something that I didn't agree with, but I'm about to say he was completely right. One of the things about Doctor Who is it's often used allegory and that kind of sci-fi kind of thing. You see it loads in Star Trek and that kind of sci-fi. Well, not that there is a kind of sci-fi like Star Trek, but you know what I mean. Allegory is a big sci-fi tool. And when somebody invades somebody from the planet Spod, you feel bad for them and they interact. And we get on and the story moves on. Big Finish are remarkably good at this sort of thing. But here... Here the story takes place on Earth. It's something that you can relate to, something you can work with, something you can see happening, something that reflects you. And instantly, you're much more involved. I didn't think this was true, I didn't think it mattered, but I was very wrong. Yes, there are some great sci-fi elements in this story. Admittedly, stuff that made me feel a little bit uneasy. The guy the main protagonist, the villain, the one without exactly a lot of motivation, the one who came across as a bit thick. Well, all he was doing was nudging history, but I just made me think of Gan from Blake 7. Somebody with a limiter stuck in his head. And let's face it, there are workarounds for limiters. Yes, he's two-dimensional, and all of his technology is a bit torchwood, but that's not a problem. Yes, there are things which aren't gone into. Now, from a UK point of view, some people of a certain age just know the name Rosa Parks in a kind of impassing, yes, it's the woman on the bus. That's kind of what we'd know. We're not proud of that, but it's not truly our culture. And that's reflected in the storylines. It's not ignored, it's not gone into, but it is something that used to be covered in primary education. And when I say used to... I don't even want to begin another rant about the state of British education. Because, trust me, we'll be here all day again. There are certain other key figures from history which are being removed. America does not have the market cornered in dubious politics. But that's not important. Because we're here to talk about Doctor Who. This is the country that voted for Obama and voted for Trump. It's got issues, but let's face it, it's also a massive and growing and potential market for Doctor Who. If they get this right, it just makes the sales of the show bigger if you just want to be purely mercenary about these things. Of which, of course, I don't. Let's not discuss rewriting history or giving you a fictional past because they're New Model Army lyrics and we've been there before. So yes, the whole thing about somebody refusing to give up their seat happened a couple of years earlier to an unmarried pregnant woman, but Rosa Parks was above reproach. Everyone could get behind her, so the whole rights movement didn't quite work that way. But let's not look at the little facts, let's look at the outcome. Because, let's face it, there was a lot of people had to walk to work, and there's very little talked about them. I'm off topic. Of course I am. Now, I like to think that originally, when they were designing Grimm... Mm, now, let's start again. When Chibbers, his Chibness, was coming to Doctor Who, he does what every great artist does. 
This is their first album. This is the album they've had in their head for years. The first album's always stuff you want to get out of your system, stuff you've thought about. So yeah, he wanted to do Rosa Parks. Who does he need? He needs a bus driver. What's the ordinary job in the world? Bus driver. Graham gets instant character definition, he gets a background, and he gets to have his PSV license, which admittedly was exactly the text I got from my dad this week, for those of us who are interested. My dad used to work for the bus company. If anyone else is interested, I did expect during the pool game to be, well, some bus enthusiasts talking about the makes and models of buses, because let's face it, there are some people out there who really are anoraks who happen to drive buses. So, the fact that Graham's a bus driver just works. We didn't see it coming and we didn't think about it until this episode, and why didn't I think about it? I just don't know. It's so obvious. The opening in 1943 was good, it made me go, hang on, this is earlier than I thought, is this the time travel messing business? And of course, it wasn't. It was just an illustration that it was the same bloke who all those years earlier had done the same thing because it was his job and he just wanted the world to fit like that. There were some storming moments. The business behind the dumpster, the business in the rooms, even the business with the marker pen. All great moments of pure Doctor Who fun. I was very impressed. There was just enough nods to the past with the Vortex Manipulator and the storm cage to keep everyone happy, but it was those ending moments where they showed footage on the monitor that made me just smile. Yes, the asteroid is a big lump of space rock, but you know what? This is our history. You can be as proud as you want, or you can be as impressed with Doctor Who, because this is the sort of programme we always knew it was capable of being. And I, for one, welcome it. Of course, there were things I don't like. I don't like the new rotor going up and down with a big bit of, well, Tibetan rock crystal salt going up and down, but you know what? It just looks like a health food shop. I need to let these things go. So at the end, when a weird song came over and I kept thinking, why didn't I have the music? I fixed that issue by simply rewinding my tape back to the beginning, pressing play and watching the Doctor Who music at the start. It's all going to be all right, because although I'm an old school fan, I know that this is a good and great show. And I'm so glad everyone else can see that. So thank you for joining me once again as I've discussed Doctor Who. And until next time, be seeing you. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance.